The events surrounding the missing colonists in Roanoke Island are still a mystery to this day. What is the story behind this mystery? How many people were missing? And what clues were found when a group of colonists returned from England to the island? Let's take a look at this and more in this special episode of the Faith and Mystery Files. In 1584, a colony was established in North America. It was the first colony set up by English settlers and later included the first child born in the English colony, Virginia Dare. In 1587, the colony consisted of military men as well as regular men, women, and children. They were hoping to create a new town or place to live and start afresh. The governor appointed for this colony was John White. At one point, John White left the colony to gather more supplies in England and hoped to come back as soon as they had loaded the ships. He had even asked the colonists to carve a sign in a tree if they decided to relocate. Yet it ended up taking him three years as war ensued, requiring all ships to stay for naval service. Once the war was over, John White set sail once again returning in 1590. When they arrived back to Roanoke Island, they found no one. The settlement had been abandoned, yet it wasn't burned down or destroyed. There weren't even bones or traces that the colony had been there in a while. John White did, however, find the word Croatoan, which had been carved in a wooden post that had been a fence at one point. Another word, Crow, had been found on a nearby tree. They assumed that the colony decided to move to Croatoan Island, now known as Hatteras Island. Despite this, John White and his crew were unable again to search further for the missing colonists as severe weather came. So his crew spent the winter in the Caribbean and later ultimately decided to abandon search and return to England. There are still many questions concerning this mystery. First, why did the colony decide to leave? The words Crow or Croatoan do suggest that they may have left to try establishing a new settlement in Hatteras Island. It would account for having everything left intact as well as no bones or other random items being found. Or did they join up with the local Native American tribes? This wouldn't have been out of the ordinary as there have been several instances where Europeans have done this to survive as they lived peacefully among the tribes. Then there is another question that is brought up. If they were going to Croatoan Island, Hatteras Island, why wasn't that island checked? Why did John White and his crew not try to figure out where the colony had gone? There were about 150 or more people in the colony it would have been difficult not to find some evidence of a large group of individuals traveling to a new location or any other location. It does seem odd as well that even though John White's daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughter, who was Virginia Dare, were among the colonists in Roanoke Island, that he wasn't very anxious to find their whereabouts. It is important to note that the Croatoan Project has documented evidence that provides proof that the colonists may have met with the Hatteras tribe to survive, since the colonists never received the supplies John White left to bring back. They would be able to learn more from the tribe on how to survive the changing weather conditions, as well as become allies with the Native American people. And this theory provides a logical answer, as finding the colonists didn't seem to be a big concern during that time. God can provide help in miraculous ways. Is this the answer to where the colonists went? Thank you so much for tuning in to this special edition of the Faith and Mystery Files. You can listen to previous episodes or get notified for new Faith and Mystery stories. Thank you so much for watching and may God bless you.